Hey everybody, it's Dana with the Hardin County Extension Office and we are here to do um, our last video with the Hardin County Public Library of 2020, which is really kind of crazy to think about because when we very first started these, um, we talked about, oh, well, we'll just do this for a, a couple months and then we'll be able to get back in person and do our normal routine. Um, and that has not happened, but it has been such a fun opportunity because typically I go to the library and we cook a recipe and we enjoy it and, and we talk and we laugh and all those things. But this has given me a little bit different um, opportunity to reach some of you who maybe can't make it to the library or um, didn't know that we did these kind of classes. So um, as fun as it's been, I am still looking forward to getting back in person and, and seeing so many of you. So if you've been following along this year, we have been doing a different appliance each month. Um, and I've made something with that appliance, showed you a little bit of, of how to use it, um, some basic care, things like that. But this month we decided to go completely opposite of that. So where we've highlighted all of the main appliances that we um, like to see people use or we get questions asked about, this video is going to be on things that you can make um, that require zero appliances. And I even went so far, whenever I thought about doing this class, I thought, okay, am I just gonna do like no oven, no microwave? Um, is, does that also include no handheld appliance? What does that really mean? Um, and so I decided if we're gonna do no appliance, that that really means no appliance, zero appliance. And so that includes no refrigeration, um, no anything that you have to plug in um, into an electric socket, anything like that. And so everything that we're gonna make um, is kind of geared towards maybe those of you who are traveling for the holidays and so you need to be able to get to your destination and put together a dish really quickly or you need to be able to put it together um, before you get on the road and it needs to be able to travel without being chilled or heated up or anything like that um, maybe you are moving and so your kitchen is kind of in disarray um, or all your things are packed or your appliances haven't arrived yet because everything is backed up right now um, or maybe you're just trying to save some money. So everything that you do um, that uses an appliance also uses electric. And so that does run up your electric bill. And so maybe it's just something that, that money is tight, totally get it. Um, this has been a crazy year and it's also the holidays right now. And so this is just a simple way to save some money too. Plus it's easy. There's no appliance, no worrying about heating up your house, anything like that. Don't have to worry about scheduling of when this is gonna come out of the oven and when we can put this back in. Um, and so it, I wanted it to be that you can do no appliance foods that aren't just peanut butter sandwiches um, and fast food. And so we have put together a, a whole menu of things um, from appetizers to main dishes to sides to desserts um, that you can do with absolutely zero appliances. There, there are more out of the box and really nice dishes. And so you can see here, I actually just got all of this out of the grocery bags. I went to the store yesterday morning. Um, and then I had to run several errands for work after I went to the store and this all just got to stay in the car with me. I didn't have to worry about running somewhere and dropping it off um, so that it could stay cool or stay warm or anything like that. This all stayed in the car with me um, until I pulled it out of the bags to set it up to do this video. So um, we'll get started. I'll show you what we have. I'll tell you what we're going to do and then um, we'll get started and I'll show you some. I've got several dis different recipes that I'll talk about. Um, as the video goes on and the, and the recipe shows, but then I'm going to actually make three of them. So I'm going to make an appetizer, I'm going to make a main dish, and I'm going to make a dessert. Um, and so I'll show you how easy those are, how simple, how nice they can be and look. Um, and hopefully we'll get some ideas for you for, like I said, your holiday parties, or maybe if it's just your own personal situation um, where you don't use any appliance to prepare these things. So we'll get started. So this recipe here, this gazpacho salad, um, is one that it kind of took a different take that I thought was neat um, and would be a really neat display um, for a holiday party or something like that. But instead of mixing it all together, you actually layer it. Um, and so this would be a, a, a neat gift idea as well because you can put it in jars um, or something cute, dress it up a little bit, but it's really pretty once it's layered um, with that tomato and then cucumbers, green peppers, olives, all of that. Um, so super simple, really easy to do, um, and very tasty as well. This is one that if you do have the option um, of a refrigerator, then it is better after you've let it chill for several hours, um, but it's not required. So you could serve it immediately. I would serve it with a slotted spoon um, because that dressing can get a little bit runny with the olive oil and the vinegar and the, the lemon juice. 
Um, and so serve it with a slotted spoon, serve it immediately if you want to, or cover and let it chill for several hours. And those flavors just really kind of mix together. Um, it's good cold. And so that is a great option as well. So we are going to make the blueberry salsa recipe um, that you saw before this video and you'll see after this video that way you can um, screenshot if you think it looks good. It's a really simple recipe. I think um, that a lot of people could really get into this recipe and I think whenever these ingredients are in season this could be absolutely delicious. Um, but it's really simple so you're just going to have two cups of whole blueberries um, that you're going to, whoo, we lost one there just go ahead and put in the bowl so we can move those out of the way and then you have um, another cup of blueberries and I know that I'm not in the screen and that's okay because um, I want you to be able to see the ingredients instead but um, another cup of blueberries that I'm gonna put in this bowl and I'm gonna crush them you can do this in um, a plastic bag if that's easier you don't have to have any fancy utensils to do this but we're just going to crush these up and it really gets that pretty purple color um, even though they're blueberries to come out so we're going to crush those I will tell you um, before this started I washed all of the blueberries washed all of the other produce that's in this recipe that's one thing that I really like about this recipe um, is that it's just a lot of fresh produce and so we've got the blueberries we've got an onion we have got um, a red bell pepper we've got cilantro and then we've got jalapeno peppers I did cheat and buy jalapeno pe peppers already diced up in the jar um, just for convenience and to show you that that is perfectly acceptable as well okay so I have crushed our blueberries here you can see that and we're just going to add that and I'm going to use this as my spoon we're just going to add that to our whole blueberries so three cups of blueberries total one cup is crushed so we move that out of the way so then um, we're going to end up using a fourth a cup of lemon juice fresh lemon juice so we'll dump that in there and scoot it out of the way we do um, cilantro, it's three tablespoons of cilantro, I'd hope if I got the right one, right? Um, three tablespoons of cilantro. I know a lot of people don't like cilantro, so I tend to chop my cilantro um, big so that people can pick that out if they want and they can still enjoy the recipe. And then, um, like I said, I used pre-diced jalapenos and I didn't add as much just because heat is not really my thing as much as a lot of people um, and so I did my jalapeno peppers I'm gonna go ahead and do my kosher salt which I'm going to have to work to scoop out of there I'll use the end of this here so there's my salt and then the last thing we have is um, our red bell pepper which we need a third a cup of diced red bell pepper and then we have an onion and we need a fourth a cup of chopped onion so I have my two cups here um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the knife that I'm using and you can kind of see you can hear that I'm kind of having to grate it a little bit uh, this pepper is really firm which I like but this knife is actually a knife that can be used with kids um, and so I'll show you in just a minute I like my pepper chunks to be large just because I really like pepper um, but I know that an, a lot of people aren't like that um, and so I will cut these down just a little bit but I really like a good crunch of pepper um, whenever I have a recipe especially if it's a salsa or something like that um, so I'm just gonna chop this up kind of willy-nilly here just because I don't think they all have to be uniform um, or anything like that that is obviously a personal preference um, some people like for that to be exact and I totally understand 
So then I've got my strips there and I'm just gonna go ahead and dice those up and I'll do those smaller than I did my other chunks there. So there's a little bit for everybody. Those of us who like the big chunks and those of us who like the smaller chunks. So I'm going to scoop this up really quickly. Um, and then we'll see what this measures out to be. I am using the same cutting board for my onion and my red bell pepper um, just for the sake of the video. But we'll measure this out because again I said we need a third of a cup. It always goes just fine until you do it on video, right? So I'm going to pack it in there just a little bit because, again, I love red bell pepper in a recipe. So there's our third of a cup. I'm going to add this as well to our bowl and move that out of the way and then move on to our onion. Um, but really quickly, I'm, I'm going to show you a little bit about the knife. So this is a knife. Um, it's a kid safe knife. And so you can run your hand along it's serrated um, it has a dull point but it still cuts um, our fruits and vegetables really easily and really well so that is something if you have kids in the kitchen um, that that is an option right here around the holidays as well it may be a good present option for those um, that you put in the kitchen with you um, and so something to consider that i just wanted to show off um, as an option Again, my onion, I kind of do willy-nilly just because I know there are people who like the onion kind of hidden in there, and then I know that there are people who want to be able to pick that onion out anytime that they can. If you have been to one of my programs before, you know that um, I typically cut my onion before I get to the program um, because it makes me ball like a baby. So if you have any actual working wives tales of how to cut an onion and not cry like a baby i would love to hear them i feel like i have tried every one of them under the sun but maybe i haven't and so again i'm gonna scoop um, off of my cutting board here and then we're just gonna measure out and see what the fourth of the cup measures out to be And then I'll add that in. And of course I lost a few because again, we're on video. So I'm gonna dump that into the bowl and I'll try to move this bowl to where you all can see it. I put it in a clear bowl so you can see all the different colors that are in this and how pretty um, this can be. And then we're just gonna stir it up. And it is as simple as that. You can serve this um, with pita chips. You can serve this with tortilla chips. You can have this by itself. Um, you can have this with cooked meat. Lost some onions there. Um, just kind of as a salsa on top of some chicken or pork or anything like that. But you have got, as simple as that was, a beautiful dish. Um, that looks like you put a lot of time and effort into it and required absolutely no appliances, uh, no refrigeration beforehand, anything like that. And so this is one you can get to your destination um, and put together right away and then serve right away. And so I'll show you again what that looks like. I broke my tripod, so I'll have to apologize for my video skills here, but you can see just how pretty that really is and how pretty that would be by a main course of some meat or something like that. Um, but again, you can have it with tortilla chips, pita chips, if you just want it as an appetizer um, or just something to munch on. Pretty dish and really simple to do. So these buffalo chicken lettuce wraps um, really couldn't be more simple. Um, obviously, you don't have to do the lettuce wraps. You could do, or do tortilla um, if you wanted, or a whole wheat tortilla would be an even better option. But the lettuce is a great option um, for anybody that's trying to watch their calories, trying to watch their carbs, um, or just looking for something a little bit different. We tend to see buffalo chicken in wraps um, frequently, and so this let lettuce wrap is a new take. Um, 
the optional Greek yogurt ranch dressing there, you do um, have to have a refrigerator for, um, or not a very long trip if you're going to take that Greek yogurt with you. But you don't have to have um, that dressing. You could use regular dressing that you just purchased at the store if you are looking for something that you don't have a refrigerator for. But past that, um, nothing there needs refrigeration or any sort of appliance. And so that's a great main course option for us. So this is another wrap option. Um, it does use tortillas. You could do this one in lettuce if you wanted, um, kind of opposite of, of the recipe we just saw. But this one's just quick, easy, some tuna, some avocado. Um, you really can play with this one if you wanted to omit certain things or add even more vegetables that you may like or even some fruits in that you think would sound good with this. Um, but put the tortilla down, put the lettuce down, scoop some of that tuna mixture into it. And then you've got a wrap that um, can be served as an appetizer or as a main dish. Okay, we're gonna move on to our main course um, with our no appliance recipes. Again, no um, refrigeration, no anything like that ahead of time um, so that you can do as much of this as possible um, on the road or, or wherever you may be. And so this is our French tuna salad. Again, I'll post the recipe before and after um, so that you have a chance to screenshot it. But I went ahead and prepped our bread. You can see here, you take a French baguette and um, cut it in half and then brush it with some extra virgin olive oil and then I took a clove of our garlic and cut it in half and just rubbed each piece after that and then you um, well and let me one half of it you actually spoon the filling out before you brush it with the extra virgin olive oil and the garlic and so then you just layer the inside with those basil leaves so our bread is prepped and I'm just going to set that off to the side and then I'm going to mix up our actual tuna salad. And so you're just going to take a can of tuna, a spoon here. I went ahead and put our salt and pepper in the tuna there because you need that as well um, just to taste. Then you're going to use um, a three-fourths of a cup of olives. Um, and these are... Um, the Kalamata olives. I actually went to Greece last year. I can't believe it's been that long. Um, but I was in Greece last year and it was amazing how many different olives and types of olive oil that there are um, and all the different uses for them. And we're so used to just a couple of options. Um, and in Greece, every recipe had olive oil. You dipped everything in olive oil. Every recipe had olives and so I think I ended up picking this recipe because it reminded me so much of Greece and I loved the food while we were there um, and so three-fourths a cup of olives you want to slice those or you can buy them in the jar pre-sliced um, just as easily then we've got red bell pepper again and this time we have a red onion um, and we get to slice the red bell pepper this time which I really like about this recipe because again I love that bell pepper um, option then we've got some Italian flat leaf parsley. I'm going to set that off as well. Um, that was a fourth of a cup of Italian flat leaf parsley. It was a third of a cup, or a half a cup, I'm sorry, of red bell pepper and a half a cup of um, red onion. It ends up being a red onion, about half of one that you chop up. And then there's two optional ingredients for this one. You can do um, a jar of artichoke carts. I'm not going to add in very many just because I'm not even sure if I like artichoke carts. I've had them on pizza before, um, but never in a sandwich like this. So half a, or a jar of artichoke carts. And then you can do blanched green beans. I'm not going to do the blanched green beans um, just because that's not something that I think I would like. But it, that is an optional ingredient if you wanted to do. Um, and you can just mix that right into your tuna salad. You could serve this tuna salad just like this if you wanted. Um, it's a really pretty dish. Again, a lot like that blueberry salsa, which I have to confess I have been eating <laughs> since I made it um, while I was prepping this recipe. Um, the blueberry salsa was delicious. And so you could just serve this as a tuna salad dish just like this um, with crackers if you wanted or by itself with croissant something like that 
but we're actually going to spoon it into our French loaf here um, since it is one of our main courses. So I'm just going to spoon some and I'll make a mess again because I'm videoing. I'm right into, and I'm going to get the things that I like, our bread into our little trough that I made right on top of those basil leaves. And there's two ways you can do this. There is a little dressing um, that you could make and pour over the whole bowl. Or you can make the dressing and do what I'm getting ready to do and pour it just over uh, my one sandwich. And so our dressing is olive oil, um, six tablespoons and three tablespoons of lemon juice. So I'm going to work to mix those together. Um, we want the lemon juice to be emulsified into the olive oil. So just combined really well um, is what we're going for there. And so I've got that really mixed up. And like I said, you could pour this over um, the whole dish. I'm going to reserve just a little bit for my sandwich here um, and serve it that way after you mix it up. Or you can pour it right over your individual serving there. Either one is fine. Um, the, the better way, um, if you're going to pour it over just like I did, because one of the things about this sandwich is you're actually going to take it and we would wrap this in plastic and then place like a, a cast iron skillet or something really heavy over it so that all of that can kind of soak into the bread and really make that a good sandwich. Um, and so that's one of the things that I like about pouring it over because it really lets that soak in. Um, if you have the option of a refrigerator, you can let that soak actually all overnight. Um, but if you don't, no big deal. Or like I said, mix it in just like that and serve this however you want. Um, however you would traditionally do a tuna salad. But this is just a French, um, to me, Greek take on a tuna salad um, that again required no refrigeration ahead of time. Make it as a sandwich for everybody. You could actually, um, this is only half of a loaf as a, a full serving, but you could actually make this as little appetizers um, if you wanted and, and cut this up even more with toothpicks in it um, and serve it that way as well. Or make it kind of like little sliders almost. Um, for just small sandwiches as well. So several options with that, um, but again, a no appliance main course meal there. All right, so we are going to move on to a couple of sides that don't require any appliances. First, we have this Mexican corn salad. You also sometimes call it street corn salad. Um, you do have the option to sear this corn first. Um, typically in a cast iron skillet, it doesn't have to be, but you can have this as a, a, as a cold corn salad and it can be just as good. Also at the bottom there, you see three um, optional ingredients of sour cream, mayonnaise, and some feta cheese. Um, those are again, if you have the option of refrigeration, then you can add those if you want. Um, they do just kind of really mix it all together and make it a thicker corn salad instead of just um, something loose, but not a requirement. Um, this is great to eat by itself. It's great to eat on torti tortilla chips. It's great to eat with chicken. Um, lots of different ways that you can have it. But again, um, typically we do see that the corn in this is cooked, but it does not have to be. And so that's why we went ahead and put it on here. So really can't get a whole lot easier than um, this first side. You're going to rinse and drain three different cans of beans. You're going to chop up a red onion, chop up a red bell pepper, and then everything else you just dump in, mix it up. Um, you can chop up some parsley or um, buy some from the store to garnish if you like. Um, and then you just mix it up and serve it right away. You can let it chill again if you have a refrigerator. It just allows that um, dressing and vinegar to really mix together and those flavors to, to be better. Um, but not a requirement. This is one that I absolutely cannot wait to make myself. I think it just seems so light and easy and especially in the summertime this is one I'm going to hang on to because I love zucchini. I love corn. I can't wait to see how this one tastes but I did want to make a note. Um, the vinaigrette recipe gives you enough that you have leftovers. So you're going to make it and it says to make it in a jar. Put all the ingredients in there and then shake it up. You're only going to use two tablespoons of that vinaigrette 
and then you'll have quite a bit left over. So don't get worried when you, you make this recipe and you've got a bunch of vinaigrette left over and you think that you've done it wrong. Um, those numbers are correct, two tablespoons, because you just need a little bit to make it kind of a light and fresh salad, but it does give you enough to make extra as well. All right, so we are down to dessert with our no appliance meals. Um, and these are something that I think would be great on the go. I think you can play with this a lot too, um, but a really simple, great for kids recipe to put together. Um, and so we're gonna do some no-bake peanut butter balls. These are not the ones that are covered in chocolate, although um, you could add chocolate in if you wanted to do chocolate chips or something like that for a different take. Um, you also could add in some chia seeds or flax seeds or some sort of um, extra boost of protein if you wanted, but we're going to stick to the simple recipe of what it calls for, which is peanut butter, honey, vanilla extract, um, oats, graham cracker crumbs, and um, dry milk powder. So a couple of things I'm going to tell you, all you're going to do is um, mix it together. So we're going to do our dry ingredients first. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about milk powder. All it is is exactly what you think of. It's milk that they have um, essentially taken the liquid out of. Um, and so you can, before a recipe, bring that milk back to life. Um, you can drink it as regular milk, put it with cold water and mix it together and it becomes milk. Um, again, and you can drink it, but you will notice a little bit of a taste difference, I think. But in recipes, um, you don't at all to me. So you even could do some non-appliance um, meals that call for milk and and you don't have a chance to have refrigerated milk you could use milk powder mix it with some cold water um, and then use that as the milk in your recipe and you really cannot tell a difference um, in most things so that is something to consider as well plus the shelf life of dry um, non-fat milk is about 18 months and so quite a bit longer than the, the um, timeline we see for milk so i'm just going to mix these dry ingredients up And then I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to do our other ingredients here in this small bowl first. Um, and so I've got a fourth cup of honey. That was a half a tablespoon of vanilla extract. And then we have a third a cup of peanut butter. One trick I've found um, to get things like peanut butter or honey um, to come out easily, you can either heat up your measuring spoon, measuring cup, whatever it is ahead of time, or you can line it with um, some vegetable oil or all, I just used olive oil from the last recipe, which might add, I ended up eating for lunch um, and it was delicious. That French tuna salad was a fantastic sandwich. Um, it turns out I do like artichoke hearts, so they were something I would add in again next time. But anyway, so I took some of that olive oil and I just coated um, the inside of my measuring cups. And then you have really no trouble um, getting honey and peanut butter and those kind of things out. Really makes it a whole lot easier. Um, so there is our mixed up honey, peanut butter, and um, vanilla extract. The recipe does call for chunky peanut butter. I didn't have any of that on hand. And instead of purchasing some, I just used, I have a ton of creamy peanut butter. So I just used that instead. I probably would add in some peanuts if I had it just for that extra crunch within the peanut butter or yeah the peanut butter ball that we're gonna have um, but not a requirement and then the other thing is if you have allergies or you're worried about allergies you're going somewhere that you're not sure you could do this recipe with um, any other the sunflower butter or the um, other products that are peanut butter um, like but they're not with they're not made with peanuts and so those are an option as well. So I'm just going to dump this into our oats, graham cracker crumbs, and dry milk mixture here. And then I'm just going to stir. Um, and so what we'll do with this is we'll turn this into um, little balls, um, bite size. If you want, again, like I said, you could really play with this. You could add in a lot of different um, fun things to this if you wanted. And then if you wanted them to be a little bit easier um, to work with or to uh, easier to bite maybe, 
you could put them in the refrigerator um, for a couple of hours until it was time to serve or even you could do it now and, and do it as a right before you rolled them into balls but that's not a requirement at all um, so you can just turn these straight into balls and serve them right away so again no appliances are actually necessary so I'm trying to just mix this slowly um, to make sure that I can get my peanut butter as spread out as possible and then I'm going to use um, an ice cream scoop to do my actual shaping um, just for ease not a requirement at all um, but it does make it a little bit easier to work with you'll you'll notice and you can't see maybe you can see it kind of starts to ball up on its own anyway um, and so it does a little bit of the work for you which is nice I've done these before um, as like an energy bite kind of thing um, where we did put in some of that flaxseed and some other things it those did have granola and um, chocolate chips as well and so again a lot of different ways that you could take this recipe um, and add in what you like or what you prefer or even if you just want to want to experiment so then I'm just going to take again a little ice cream scoop and I'm just going to dump them out like that they're not as perfectly formed that way because you kind of get what comes out of the ice cream scoop but for a no touch method um, that is in my opinion the way to go um, to me it all goes down the same so it doesn't always have to look completely perfect but if you wanted it to be that perfectly shaped um, ball you could coat your hands with a little bit of that olive oil as well um, just a very thin layer and then you could shape these in two balls but I'll show you how this has turned out once I've done just a few of these here and so I'm just kind of packing it in I'm um, using the side of my bowl because um, I not only like no appliance no cook things um, I really like no or no extra dish things as well and so for somebody who's getting ready to have to do all the dishes from these classes um, I'll take one less dish and one less little bit of a mess to just do this kind of in the willy-nilly way that it that it is um, so I'll show you what those look like and then we will show you the rest of the recipes again if you have questions please ask I would love to answer them while this is playing or after on um, and at the end of this video you'll see my contact information I would love to email you these recipes um, or answer any questions that you have all right see you all later I absolutely love this recipe. I love traditional um, fruit crisp, whether it's peach crisp, crisp or apple crisp or berry crisp, whatever it is. Um, and we've got some really great recipes for some cooked crisp here at the Extension Office that I would love to send you if you wanted that as well. Um, one of them that I can think of is a peach blackberry crumble, which is just delicious. But this is one that if you don't have that oven option, um, you actually can do it raw. And so you're gonna kind of do it like you normally would. You're gonna get those berries. Um, you're going to actually use maple syrup to get those berries um, to kind of have that sweet sugary consistency um, and also that stickiness that will help the, the nuts stick to it. A little bit of cinnamon in this just for flavor, um, but you're just going to crush those. You can crush those in a blender if you want to for make it quite a bit easier, but you can also crush them in a plastic bag just as easily. And then you're just going to scatter that nut mixture over. You can Put it over and just serve it that way or you can mix it all together um, and serve it that way as well but this is a great recipe put whatever berries you prefer in it um, so you have a little bit of room to play with this as well i just wanted to put this list up there this is by no means the entire list but it does give you a good starting place for um, some things that you can purchase that you can look at this list and, and come up with all kinds of um, recipes that you can put together and and you can do things they don't have to be stored in the refrigerator um, they don't have to be heated to eat and so you can make lots of different dishes in addition to the ones that I've showed you today 
um, off of this list. So again, just a starting place may um, read through this and get some ideas um, just based on what you see and so that you could come up with your own dish even just from looking at this list. So, As always, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to put them either in the chat box during this video or um, use one of my two pieces of contact information there, my email, or that is our office phone number. I would be more than happy to, again, send you these recipes via email or answer any questions that you have, send you some more recipes that I found along the way, um, whatever it is that you may need to hopefully make your holidays as stress-free um, and easy as possible, especially if you're somebody who, whatever your situation, you don't have appliances and you need more um, recipes like this. Thank you all for tuning in. And I hope to hear from you and I hope you have a great, um, calm, healthy holiday season.